Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech channel. And as it gets colder here in the Midwest and the holidays approach, it's time for cookie cutters. So every year around this time, I do a video about cookie cutters. And there are a number of challenges with cookie cutters. The most significant one is, how do you take an existing image and create an outline with the fewest steps in the easiest possible way? So this year, as Thanksgiving approaches, I decided to make some turkey cookie cutters with my grandchildren, Shira and Alex. And while we were doing that, I, I literally had to go back and look at one of my old videos to remember what the simplest way was, and it still had too many steps. So together, we discovered a magical new way to create cookie cutters by using a feature in every slicer, slicer being the program you use with your 3D printer to prepare things to print, that I've never seen anywhere before. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, before we get started with cookie cutters, for those of you new to this channel, the Make With Tech channel is a place you come to learn how to use desktop technology, 3D printers, a little bit of electronics, easy stuff, a little bit of programming. Yes, programming is no more complicated than following a recipe or a pattern that you're sewing. Things that allow you to use all of the remarkable new tools available that are relatively inexpensive, hundreds of dollars that you can use on your kitchen table. If you want to see more videos like this, just subscribe to the channel, click on the bell. Now, let's talk about cookie cutters. The challenge of cookie cutters is not finding pictures. You can find pictures all over the web. You just Google, I don't know, picture of turkey, and you'll find lots of pictures of turkeys. But how do you convert that into a cookie cutter? And you need to do a couple things. The first thing is you need to have it in a format where it's an outline. And there can't be things in the middle. So you have to take out any things on the middle because if you print this as a cookie cutter and you lift it up, the things in the middle are gonna stay on the print bed. They're not gonna work. And then the second thing is that you need to make it three-dimensional. It has depth. Well, there's a wonderful program called Tinkercad that many of our children and grandchildren learn in school. And yes, if a third or fourth grader can learn to use Tinkercad to draw something, you can learn it too. But in fact, today you'll see you only have to learn one thing, how to import an image. I lied to you, two things, how to import an image and how to export a 3D file called an STL file. And then we're gonna use a magical feature. Normally, when you prepare cookie cutters to print on a 3D printer, you load them into your program called a slicer that converts the three-dimensional shape into a series of layers. Because a 3D printer is no different than a hot glue gun marking up the surface of the print bed and then moving up a little and then drawing some more, moving up a little and drawing some more. That's why 3D printing is called additive manufacturing when you use it to make industrial parts. Well, there's a standard feature in pretty much every slicer whether you're using Cura that we're going to use today because it's widely used or Prusa Slicer or S Simplify 3D or any other slicer that came with your printer. And that is they almost all have a feature now to print vases. And what is a vase? It's an outline. Now it has a bottom, but it has no top. So how can we use the techniques that are used for printing vases to make it much easier to print cookie cutters. If you're an experienced user of a 3D printer, think about this while I go through the rest of the video and I'll show you exactly how. The first thing we're going to need 
is a picture. Now, not all pictures are as easy to make into cookie cutters as others. So let's learn how to find the right picture. So if we go into your browser and it doesn't matter whether you're using Chrome or Edge or Safari or any other browser, and you can do this on any computer or Chromebook, Mac or Windows, you might be able to do this on an iPad, but I'm not sure. It's easier to do on a computer. Well, you can look for a picture. So the first thing you might do is type in picture of, and you can see what I was Googling before, picture of Turkey. And you see lots of pictures. Well, these pictures are very nice, but they're not really suitable for cookie cutters. Remember, we want to get to an outline. So what should we start with? Well, let's start with a solid image. And the best way to get solid images is to Google to search for free silhouette images. Because when you search for silhouette images, you get images that are very, very suitable for the first step of creating a cookie cutter. So we can refine that a bit more and we can say turkey. And we'll see here lots and lots of images. So, oh, I don't know, this one looks pretty good. So if I go over here and if I click on this image of a turkey, we'll see a bunch of different things come up. I click on this one and there's no save button. And when there's no save button, you generally right click and say save as. Now, this is going to save this file if we go all the way over here to the end as a PNG file. That's gonna be okay, but it's gonna add a step to our process. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And the reason is we need to start with an image that's an SVG image, not a JPEG, not a PNG, not a PIC, not a GIF, we need to start with an SVG. So we could search for SVG images and you're likely to find them, but why should we be limited to SVG images? So we're gonna start with this PNG image. I'll show you how to convert it into an SVG very, very simply at no cost with no software to install. So let's take and save that. And you can see it's saved in my download directory. And now, I'm gonna to go to a site called image.online-convert.com. And if you were to just search convert image to SVG, you'd find a lot of free sites like this. The reason these sites exist is they run lots of ads and they make money on the ads, so they provide you something for free. So I'm going to choose a file and I'm gonna choose from my download directory, the turkey we just loaded in. And then I'm just gonna click on start. All this stuff, all these fancy features on the bottom, you don't need to worry about. Just click on start. And in just a few moments, it's going to convert that PNG file to an SVG file. Now, what's the difference between them? Well, a PNG file or a JPEG, which is often the files you get off your cameras or your phone, they're made up of dots. Lots and lots of dots. Dots in different colors that come together to create an image. An SVG file is made up of th objects, two-dimensional objects, lines, segments, triangles, different drawing objects that are drawn using formulas. So SVG files are unique and interesting because you can make them bigger or smaller and they won't distort because you're effectively adjusting the formulas. Whereas if you take a picture, a JPEG, and you stretch it too much, it gets sort of blurry and fuzzy because you're making the dots bigger. They don't scale as well. Okay, enough about that. We should be done here. And you can see here, it says your converted file. I'm gonna click on download. And now in my download directory, we're going to have both the original PNG file and we're going to have the SVG file. So now what's the next step? Well, the SVG file is flat. It's an image. We need to make it three-dimensional, give it height. We're going to use Tinkercad, the program for elementary school students that's completely free to do that. And if it's the first time you'll have to sign up, 
Um, I've used this many times before. You can see other things I was practicing with over here. And once you sign up, I want you to click on Create a New Design. And then click on Import. Remember I told you there are two steps you're going to have to do. We're going to choose a file. We're going to choose our Turkey SVG file and open it up. And this is very important. We have to create the size. Well, the size is in millimeters. So generally, I don't want a cookie cutter that's 900 millimeters. That'd be about this big. Generally about 100 millimeters, 130 millimeters. Those are good size cookies. Uh, let's pick something in the middle for this one. Let's pick 110 and only enter in the length and then hit a tab and it will add the width proportionally so it won't stretch out your turkey. Say import. Okay, and now we have a turkey and I can take and rotate around and look at that turkey. And it's three dimensional, see it has height because Tinkercad will automatically give it a height of 10 millimeters. But that doesn't look like a cookie cutter, that's a solid. We're gonna do everything else with your 3D printing software with your slicer. So I'm gonna rename this to Turkey for video. And now I'm going to export it. So Tinkercad's a fascinating program. There must be a dozen videos on the channel about using it. I urge you to look those up. But for right now, we're, all we needed to do is import the turkey and now export the turkey. And we're going to export as an STL file. What is an STL file? It's a three-dimensional representation of something made up literally of triangles. Now, I know it's hard to believe that a bunch of triangles together could make a 3D object, but that's what it really is. We can't 3D print STL files directly. We have to process them with a program called a slicer. That's also the program we're gonna use to turn it into a cookie cutter. So we're gonna save it as an STL file that'll put another document, another file in our download directory. Okay, now I can close that out and we're ready to run our slicer. Now remember the slicer we're going to use is Cura. Many of you, if you bought a 3D printer online from Amazon, maybe you have a Creality printer, it comes with a copy of Cura or you can download Cura on the web. You can use whatever slicer came with your 3D printer and every printer either recommends or comes with a slicer because it converts, once again, this three-dimensional object or this three-dimensional object into a series of layers because 3D printers print layers. So we're gonna start with Cura. So now we need to open up that STL file to convert it. So we're gonna go here to the folder. We're gonna open up our Turkey for video and we'll see it's still a solid. It's three dimensional, but it's a solid. How do we make it an outline? Well, slicers allow you to control the walls of what you're printing, the top, the bottom, and the center called the infill. So let's use those controls. Now, when you first open up your slicer, it may look like this you need to click on custom, which is sort of the, a more expert mode in order to do what I'm recommending here. So the first thing we have to decide is how thick do we want these walls? Well, the nozzle on a 3D printer, on most consumer 3D printers, is 0.4 millimeters. We want it to be a multiple of this. So this one here was 1.2. This one here was 2.0. Um, I think this might be a little thin. This might be a little thick. So I'm going to set this to 1.6, which is a multiple of 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6. And you'll see it's going to print four lines. The printhead's going to go around four times to print this outline. That's great. So we have the outline proper. Now we need to go to top and bottom. And you can see I already did this here. Yours will probably look something like this. And I need to change the top from being 0.8 millimeters to being zero. 
and I need to make sure the bottom is also zero. So now I've defined how thick the walls are and there's no top or bottom here. Now I need to do one more thing. I need to go to infill. Mine once again was zero because I'd done this before, but it probably starts at 15 or 20 because you don't want it to fill in the inside. So we have to tell it don't fill in the inside. Set that to zero. And now we're ready to slice our cookie cutter. So I'm gonna click on slice and you'll see it's gonna print in 49 minutes. I'm gonna click on preview and voila, we now have a cookie cutter. And if we zoom all the way in, we'll see it has three walls, one, two, three. Now this spot right here is called a seam and you may see that on your model when you print it and you might have to file that off a little bit to make it perfectly smooth. But we just took a solid object as an SVG file. We loaded it into Tinkercad, two steps, import, export. We loaded it into our slicer and we're ready to print cookie cutters that look like this. Now all you need to do is save this to your SD card, walk it over your printer and get started. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell below so you'll be notified about other videos. Go to the channel and search for Tinkercad, search for cookie cutters to see other techniques. Search for 3D printers to learn about a bunch of different 3D printers. I've reviewed 13, 14 different models now on the channel. So there's probably one that if you don't already have one, might be the right fit for you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. And most important, let's continue to learn together.